cantier, cantare, cantare, whatever you like to pronounce it. Cantier is a mastery rank 10 weapon that is introduced in this update. If you don't know how to get it, just grind the Ascension game mode at Uranus. If you can't get the blueprint, you can buy it with 300 vestigal modes, which is around 10 to 15 rounds of grinding. The weapon itself is quite the special, not just in the throwing department, but all kinds of weapon. Kantare, uh, Kantir is one of the most specially designed weapons you can ever get in this game. Starting on the playstyle itself, Kantir, when you reload, the kunais you threw out will return and it has a set 300% quick chance. You still remember that I said it has a 300% set quick chance? Nah, I lied to you. Though yes, the quick chance cannot be increased by any sources, but puncture procs can affect it, making it 325% quick chance when there are 5 puncture procs on the enemy it hits, capable of dealing tier 4 crits. But that's not all. When the kunai returns, it is aimed at your ties, which is where the kunai is taken from, from the point of where it lands to around your warframe's ties. Between these two points, the returning kanker seems to be piercing through all kinds of things, including enemies that is on the way, making it actually the only true infinite punch through weapons in the game. The first being Zenith's semi-auto. True infinite punch through means that it will pass through any walls, any enemies in its path. Thus, the term true infinite punch through. While true infinite punch through is extremely nice, but if the original throw itself doesn't have any punch through, it will drag this great perk down a lot. It's really hard to make use of this perk. And wow, base 1.4 punch through. That's some great inclusion. 1.4 means that this weapon can punch through doors and two humanoid targets and stops around the third one or maybe the second one. Ugh. Kantir is also one of the few infinite ammo weapons but unlike others, it does not recharge. It reloads like normal weapons but has the perk of an infinite ammo weapon. Like previously stated, shots by Kantir will eventually return back to you when you reload. But what if you don't reload? That's a good question. Kantir, despite not reloading, will start to return itself after shooting out a set amount of shots with an odd catch. When I was doing testing way before the birth of this video, you know, I was making a video about melee afflictions documenting the possible synergies of it, I spent some time off on this weapon with energized munitions and I found that it will start to return itself after a set amount of shots despite me not reloading at all. And after some wiki check a few days later to confirm this information, it was stated that this phenomena will start to happen when 15 blades are in the battlefield. But after some rigorous testing with 2.7 multi shot, it seems that the blade starts to return at 12. Odd. Not 15, but why 12? With maths, we can see that 11 shots times 2.7 multi shot accounts for 29.7 total average blades, barely before the blade starts to return at the 12th shot around the 30th blade. And with an extremely precise test, it is proven that after the 30th shot with no multi shots modded, the blade starts to return at 31. You can count it yourself here. But that's basically the summary. And so the theory should be, once the embedded blades exceeds 30, the blade will begin returning in an inconsistent order and this includes multi-shots. Speaking about the reload mechanics, do you know this mod called Sim Charge? For those who didn't know, this mod allows a weapon's last magazine to deal plus 200% more damage, and that weapon must have 6 magazines or higher. It's a niche mod that works on a few weapons, and it is pretty good when it works. This mod 
actually works on the returning blades only if you reload and recall the blades not by the other way I just mentioned that's some banger find by those who added this into the wiki not gonna lie but out of all things how does it perform well let me show you There are a lot of builds can be paired with this weapon. The build of the weapon consists of using Blast as the main DOT. As from my testing, it seems to prog it pretty well and provide some area damage as well. Since our main focus is the returning blades, there will be only crit damage mods. Sin charge is self-explanatory, so does the rest. We will be looking at Tempest Barrage Rhino first. This is the most straightforward combination. It allows both Viral and Corrosive for maximum potential against Grenier. Arcane Velocity for huge fire rate. Piercing Roar because Puncture Prox works on the 300% crit and basically a must on Rhino. I personally like this a lot. Just the casual Tempest Barrage Rhino moment. The next one is Energized Munition. This focus on throwing the blade as much as we could and let the blade return by itself. We will be replacing Sim Charge with Magazine Capacity as it allows us to fire more and reload less. Or you could use Magnum Force to make the bullet spread a bit and makes it hit more target in a straight line. The build is self-explanatory just press buttons and aim well. It's all you need to do. Speaking about self-explanatory, Rage Rhino is also pretty self-explanatory. This build allows quicker enemy flow with Piercing Roll, Rhino Storm and Iron Skin to counter the increased enemy fire. This should be fine for this particular showcase. Though you need to cast a lot but it allows enemy to move faster and die faster. While Tempest Barrage will provide generally more total damage in this situation but stuns the enemy a lot and this does not which is pretty good. Since survival is not the only game mode you did be playing, some disruption mission won't hurt either. Mods are pretty much the same. Embedded Catalyzer allows more status chance and we can trigger the on ability cast with operator in and out technique. This build will focus on utilizing slash on the weapon itself in combination of Expedite Suffering Rhino which is just sending death to the home of your enemies. Guess you will need to see it yourself.
Although Kentir is not the best kind of weapon you'd be using daily, but for a mastery rank 10 weapon, that's quite the performance. But you can say this is not one of the most special weapons in the game in terms of playstyle, modding, and interactions. I recommend you picking this up for some serious fun if you really care about those spies of life. And that's all for today. See you all next time. Goodbye.